My name is Samir Mardini. I'm a uh, plastic surgeon at Mayo Clinic. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about facial paralysis and facial reanimation. So facial paralysis, we're talking about uh, either a weakness of the face on one side or two sides, or, or we're talking about complete paralysis. So uh, we have people that present to us with uh, either just a, 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 when you look at them, you can see that they're smiling, but one side is smiling uh, a lot stronger than the other side. And um, some people present with no smile at all on one side, uh, or even no smile at all on both sides. So that's what we call facial paralysis or facial. Um, now, what causes this? We're either this this happens either as a burst condition, so we have uh, children that are born with this kind of thing. Other causes are things like stroke or um, a viral infection that can sometimes weaken the face or or even paralyze it completely. Um, and other things involved uh, accidents, uh, so trauma, things like that, that actually affect the, the facial nerve that, that moves the muscles in the face, uh, or after a tumor. Uh, sometimes there's a, a tumor or some kind of uh, cancer that's taken out, and, uh, and the process of taking out, because it involves maybe the facial nerve, then that, that uh, the facial nerve is gone and the, the patient can't move their, the, their face. So the, the facial nerve, it involves different parts of the face. So we're talking about the, the brow, for example, you can lift the eyebrow the nerve uh, when it stimulates that part of the face. Uh, also eye closure, um, or mainly the smile. Um, and then we're talking about lower lip depressor, so bringing the lip down, or, or the neck muscles uh, that uh, are innervated by, by the facial nerve. Those all can be affected, either one of them or two of them, or all parts of the face can be affected. And like we talked about earlier, we're talking about either it affects one side of the face or both sides of the face. Um, either way, this is really a devastating problem for the people who have this because, uh, you know, you could be someone walking around with a normal smile and the next day you wake up and there's something wrong or, or if your child has this, I mean, it's a big deal. Uh, but the good news is that for almost all types of patients and all ages, uh, we have a way to treat this. And, and often the results are really awesome. Um, so depending on your age and the type of problem that you have and the different parts of the face that are involved, uh, we, we find a, a, a treatment plan that's appropriate for you. And of course, uh, part of it has to do with what you're ready to undergo. Um, so there are, there are things that we do that are, that are non-surgical and there are things that we do that are surgical. So when, when we're trying to put together a treatment plan, we're looking at um, what parts of the face are involved and we're looking at if we have one side or both sides uh, involved. Um, and then we are looking at doing things that are surgical versus non-surgical. So non-surgical stuff, we're talking about, uh, for example, Botox. Uh, Botox, as a lot of you know, weakens the muscle. So why would we want to use that in patients who have facial paralysis? Well, uh, when you have facial paralysis, uh, you have an asymmetric smile, so you're smiling really hard on one side and not, not at all on the other side or maybe just a little bit weaker on the other side. We can use Botox sometimes to weaken the normal side so you don't have that much asymmetry or that much um, difference between the two sides. Now, this of course is not such a nice solution, but it's a, a solution that kind of helps some patients who have a really tight pull on the normal side and the other side is not moving at all. Um, but our most powerful tool and uh, the surgery that we resort to the most in helping patients have a dramatic improvement uh, is uh, what we call uh, functional muscle transfers. So one of, one of the options is to transfer the muscle that's in the temple. We call it the temporalis muscle. Sometimes we can turn that over and, and when you bite, then you can end up pulling on your cheek and you, you, you end up smiling. This we kind of save for, this one, this type of procedure gives a reasonable result, uh, but, but we end up saving it for patients who are older that can't tolerate a big surgery or patients who don't want to undergo a big surgery and they want to undergo sort of a, a medium surgery and accept a, a reasonable result but not an amazing result. Um, the type of surgery that we do that, that I think gives the most spectacular result is transferring a muscle from the leg uh, to the face. So what we do is we take the gracilis muscle, which is one of the muscles in the thigh, and we go through a small incision. We take the, the muscle, uh, the gracilis muscle, with the artery and vein that supply that muscle, 
and the nerve that supplies that muscle. Now the nerve is the one that gives energy to that muscle so it can contract. We take those, uh, the artery and vein and the muscle itself and the nerve, we take everything up, we put the, the muscle under the skin in a position that can recreate a smile. So we position in the right place, then we put the artery and vein of the muscle, we, we suture it using the microscope and, um, and small sutures to the, an artery and vein in the, in the face, usually in the neck area. And what happens is you end up getting flow through that muscle and the muscle lives and it pinks up and, and, uh, and it, it basically is a transplantation. So we transplant the muscle from your thigh to your face. And because it's your own tissue, we don't have to use immunosuppressions or other things that are involved in, in other transplants. Um, and then we connect the nerve. And that nerve is really the, the source of energy to that muscle. The nerve can, that nerve we connect to either um, uh, branches from the other side of the facial nerve or we can sometimes plug it into a nerve on the same side of the face. And, and we can talk about that uh, more depending on your condition. But basically we have a source of energy for that muscle that's transferred. And what happens is uh, after a few months, uh, as, as we're waiting for that nerve to sort of give energy to the muscle, um, we, we do some physical therapy, some muscle stimulation, things to keep the muscle nice and healthy while we're waiting. And at about six months or seven months or something along those lines, depending on, the, on the, how long the nerve is, uh, we start to see a, a smile. So the, the muscle starts moving a little bit and the, the smile starts developing and within a few days you start to see uh, a smile and, and, and some symmetry in the face and for people who don't have any movement at all, it's a dramatic difference because you're starting to see, uh, instead of one side moving the other side completely droopy, you're starting to see both sides smile and almost, often almost a perfect result uh, and, and that's such a gratifying feeling for for the patients or the child or the family and the and the surgeon as well and and that's really for us at least that's the joy in, in doing this type of surgery and seeing the 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 reaction and the dramatic difference between the before and after and the type of um, uh, emotions and feelings that are involved uh, for everybody the the whole team that we have here uh, for the patients, the, the family members, and, and the surgeon, it's, it's quite a traumatic uh, um, feeling.